I am looking for more and more feelings of stability and easeful living. A season of ritual and regulation. My tenderest moments are experiences I long to keep to myself. And still, I recognize the necessity of finding some sustainable way to engage with the world. I am finding my ground here and releasing in more measured ways into a simple kind of flow. I am feeling more and more sweetness, not only in solitude, but incrementally in connection with others as well. This fear of people. This fear is not unwarranted. And I need a different way to orient and organize my experience within the world. Your tallest order is afoot, and you are allowing yourself to move through what's required in service of growing pains. Looking forward to times that present tenderness as symptoms of care and compress. You've been injured for so long, and in some areas you question if, how, or where there is a journey to recovery from your struggles. In these areas, you look at the need for potential permanent support. Your swift moves come into contact with the moment of the earth, the play space of the times, and you core connect to a sometimes thing amidst the night and morning's light. You take the long way home and rest your head upon the side of the car door as you comfy yourself in for a long ride ahead. The spaces you enter come calm and collected, and you spend your time patient amidst the storm. Let yourself lead. Let yourself live. Let yourself linger a bit at the edges of your making and sharing process. You begin to fulfill more and more of your core needs and walk the life you desire and feel increasingly at home in your own body. Oh, the long ride here. Body scan. How am I doing? I feel a little antsy, a little penned in, penned up. A little struggle in the patience department. My delight turns the lift cheek forward and the pressure in my head eases a bit. What reasons do we show up? Relationship. It all comes down to relationship. A place to catch my ebb and flow states. You want your pressure back. You fight the right side of your own body and wish to find more empathy between your two halves and hold yourself home into the completion of your body's experience. What spaces come forward amidst the uncertain measures? How do you create care for comfort and crawl yourself back into the space of your dreams upon waking? What tender times do you hold for yourself? You hold the soft days and tender nights and behold yourself. The greatest gift of all is your light, even in the darkness of nights that are the gift to you. Your offered care is something to lean upon for comfort and flow. Hello, my cozy little community. I have a neighbor upstairs that just turned on the music really loud and is stomping around. I don't know if you can hear it, but I decided that I just wanted to come and and connect with you anyways and deal with the noise um, if there's if it shows up on your end. Um, then it's just going to be part of the video and let things be messy and let things be okay if they're not perfect and let things just be as simple, smooth and whatever they're going to be for the moment that they're going to be them. I don't know if you relate to the perfectionist patterns, but I have a lot of anxiety that comes up anytime something isn't just right or just synchronized or just in flow 
and I, and I get nervous and worried that, well, that must mean I'm doing something wrong, or that must mean that there is something off about my intention or that this, that, and the other, I think there's a lot of, um, ideas I had of, about myself and about the way I've moved through the world that I still catch myself in and have to continually release the hooks of feeling like if things aren't smooth then I've done something wrong if things are hard then I must be in the wrong place and also not choose to override and push forward past the resistance and use my sort of will to just carry forth I found that I used to do that too and that didn't work for me that really wound up with me overtaxing my nervous system and overworking my body and and maybe it's that I just did too much of it for too long and that short spurts of it could be okay and perhaps I'll get to the point where I'm willing ready and able to do that again without too much um too much content coming up for me to process <laughs> from what I've what I've put myself through in the past um, in those cycles. But I guess I just wanted to come on quickly today and say my hi. I kind of have this little format now that that I'm feeling like I can rest inside of a little bit on YouTube. And that's the pages with voiceover over just me just writing them for the day. And then uh chatting with you about how I'm doing or whatever comes up and last video was pretty loaded I feel like I got into religious trauma a little bit that land that term has been helpful for me I guess there's an actual religious trauma syndrome and I've been researching that and a lot of like epiphanies have been going off in my head around the challenging conversations I've had a hard time having with friends throughout um the last couple of years when I've been being more honest about how I feel about certain things and um yeah it's been it's been helpful but it's also been confronting and challenging and uh I do know that a lot of what I am aware of in my own life is not wanting like a high control environment yet I struggle with giving myself high control environments because it's what I've sort of been taught is what makes you successful or a good leader or in in a good place in your life etc now they're doing construction next door I don't know if you can hear that either it's a little muffled so hopefully <laughs> the microphone doesn't pick it up so much but I have my peppermint tea with some lavender inside of it so delicious and um one of my favorite things to make for myself my little teapot and it's a nice warm day, a sunny day. I went to a winery yesterday with some friends. It was uh, one of their birthdays. And um, and so we met up in, in, a, in, a, beautiful, in a beautiful vineyard <laughs> at a winery and had some, some tastings. And it was a really lovely and connecting time. And it's nice to incrementally on my own pace learn how it is I can come into connection with other people without completely overwhelming and exhausting myself one thing I've noticed as someone who gets a lot of social anxiety is it helps me to take my own car places because then I always feel like I have an out <laughs> I have the ability to leave if it gets too much and also if it's long drive like it was yesterday it was like a two and a half hour drive there and then uh, again back and then I also um, had the decompression time by myself driving, which I really value and enjoy that quiet time. Um, I also went up early and um, one of my best, 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 best friends uh, lives close to um, like 30 minutes away from that area. So I met, I met, um, I met her for, for a little, uh, a little breakfast beforehand. And that was so good. <laughs> And it made me really realize just how much I miss having like a person, you know, like I haven't been in a romantic relationship for five years and 
prior to that, I was a serial, serial monogamous um, for like 15. So I was used to always having kind of someone around, um, even as there, there were um, challenges and not really that much time necessarily that I spent with my partners. But there was still a, a kind of connection that... Um, that I miss having and some of that I get with like my best friend too which is just like enjoying someone's company having it be light having it be fun and pleasurable and not having it feel like you have to catch up completely because you haven't seen each other in so long or that someone's going through something so you're getting together to help them work through something and it's not that that doesn't happen with my best friend or the people that I was in committed relationships with but there's also time the time between and the the space and the ease and the flow and without it feeling like a a social anxiety inducing event like a party <laughs> There is more ease of connection and just fluid engagement that I really value. And so I'm hoping to bring a little bit more of, of that energy here and see if I'm able to. It's as someone who is scared of people <laughs> talking to a lot of strangers on the internet, it's a interesting task that I'm giving myself. It's definitely a stretch <laughs> and I am... I am coming into connection with the part of me that's willing and wanting that kind of uh, relational fluency, I guess, the kind of ability to come easily in and out of connections with multiple people. And even as I'm just talking to the camera, so I'm just like looking at myself over Zoom and like talking to myself right now, which helps me regulate a little bit. Uh, it still is a little nervy, uh, knowing that, you know, you don't know where the videos are going to. There's something just very, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's no words there. It's just that feeling. Yeah, I'm curious how many of you are, are creators who make and share and toss connection points out into the ethers and see. Uh, and I know there's ways that you can like target audience and you can streamline this and you can do SEO and blah, 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 blah. And, um, <laughs> and all that aside, there's the human experience of like, just the process of figuring out what it feels like in our own bodies to be in relationship with ourselves and the process of showing up in connection with somebody or some buddies. <laughs> several other bodies many other bodies else and um living into what would we need in order to make that more comfortable which is what I've been questioning myself about lately and I've been finding the structure of having the format is helpful with my little like this is what I do I film my I film my pages I read my pages I don't overthink it <laughs> and then I just chat with you for a little bit see what comes out. So that's what I'm doing today. But if you'd like to support me and this process I'm in, it would feel so good to have you as a patron over on my Patreon. And over there, I share um, weekly writing. Uh, I do a little weekly word share in a post on Sundays. And I also uh, do a little account able tea. So I'm still figuring out like what's consistently what those things are, but I've been sharing twice a week and um, or more. And there's also uh, like a library of past practices and writing sessions and journal prompts and worksheets and I'm going to keep kind of I love emergent process and practice and I'm going to keep feeling into what emergently feels like the next step based on what my needs are each moment and then each month kind of reflect on that and adjust the 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 experience of my journaling home over there on Patreon from there and here with you too. So um, we'll keep coming in and out of connection and to see where it goes. No pressure, no expectations, just 
possibility and maybe even a little bit of play down the line now that I'm getting through my process of like really hardcore trauma integration of like terror of people I feel like I'm finding some tools to help me feel more stable in the making sharing process and not so um dysregulated and disorganized from the fear of it all anyways have a sip of my tea and I'm going to say goodbye I'll see you guys next time